Hello guys, it's me Robin. Welcome or welcome back to Cats Out The Bag, where I talk all about self-growth, levelling up, bettering yourself, all of that good stuff. I've done quite a few different episodes on like motivation, confidence, university talk, or, like gym stuff, all of that good stuff. And I have another new topic to talk about today, which is actually interview um, how to make a good impression for an interview. So this is something that I think is quite an important thing. Obviously this is called Cats Out The Bag. It's literally just secrets out. I could talk about whatever I wanted and I felt like talking about interviewing today. So I feel like it's that kind of time of year when everyone's kind of getting into jobs. Like if you've just come out of uni, you're looking for a job come September. So by the way, happy Wednesday everyone. <laughs> I thought I'd film this video. I have just filmed what, like last week's video was a university talk for if you're going into uni. This one's gonna be more focused on if you're going into a job and how to get the job you want. So also feel free to leave any suggestions of videos that you'd like to see in the description box. I'm more than happy to see, like I'm, I'm gonna answer all of the comments and everything and I'll obviously take any suggestions in and yeah, maybe film them, so do leave them down below if anything you'd like to see in the future, whether it's uni-based or whatever. And yeah, let's get into this, but before we do, please do make sure to subscribe, because guys, we're getting close to 1k, which is super exciting. We might have even hit it by the time you're watching this, but I'm slightly pre-filming this. Um, so yeah, we may have actually hit it by the time you're watching this, which would be crazy, because then that means that I can start earning money off of my second channel which is crazy so honestly if you guys would subscribe that would mean the entire world to me as you'll know and if you follow me on my other youtube then do make sure to subscribe over there as well which is just robin emily and that's for all the behind the scenes vlogs content or like random stuff whatever you guys want to see on there i post to be honest so yeah anyway let's get into this video because i'm really excited to talk about how to make a great impression in a job interview. I've got quite a few tips here, so let's get into it. Just readjusted my camera, sorry about that guys. Um, but yeah, so, say you have a job interview scheduled. Congrats, that's amazing. Now it's time to prepare for it, which is terrifying, but if you've been accepted for an interview, by the way, well done, like a huge well done. If you're watching this video, there's obviously a huge chance that you have been accepted for an interview, which is so exciting. So a huge well done to you because you're like halfway there already kind of <laughs> you've done the difficult bit of actually applying for the job i assume you've done your cv and all of that might do another video actually on cvs and stuff i should have probably done this in a different order but do let me know if that's something you want to see <laughs> cv <laughs> god i'm not even funny i don't know why i say that stuff but now it's obviously time to prepare for the interview and ensure you make the best impression possible otherwise that was a wasted time writing that new cv so you want to leave the hiring manager feeling positive about you, feeling like you're a good candidate, all of that. So I'm going to provide some examples of things you can do and how to be successful and come across really well, make a great impression in an interview. So let's get into this. So before the interview, so this is the kind of thing you're going to do in the week before, a couple of days before, you set aside some time to do the following things. Number one, research the company and interviewers sometimes with some companies they may be smaller you may not be able to find much information on the interviewer and you may not know who's going to be interviewing you but you can definitely always find um, information on the company and who you're going to be working for that's just something you can always find information on and I actually once with my first ever job I was invited to an interview although they never told me it was an interview, so they just said, come along and pick up your t-shirt so you can start work. Basically, as if I didn't ever have to do an interview because it was just a pub job down the road and they were hiring anyway. When I got there, he started asking me what I knew about the company and I was like, oh, well, I haven't really researched because I wasn't told this was gonna be an interview. And he was like, oh, you're gonna be in for some surprises then. So I hadn't prepared for the interview at all. It was the most awkward thing. I did still get the job somehow but it was so embarrassing because he was just sat there like, so what do you know about the company so far? And I was like, uh. <laughs> and then he was like, you did know this was an interview, right? I was like, no, I wasn't told it was an interview. Don't know whose fault that was, maybe mine. <laughs> but if you know more about the company, you're gonna go straight in there with a lot of confidence and 
a good way to find this stuff is using their website, social media posts, press releases, all of that, because then you can find out more about them, what they stand for and all of that, because if you're looking up on their social media posts, then you'll know what they kind of tolerate, what they don't, um, so that's always really important. Number two is practicing your interview answers, so prepare yourself for the most common questions, ones you know, like, tell me a bit about yourself, do you have any questions for me? Why are you interested in this role with our company? All of that. And I will go into um, depth in another video all about like interview questions and how to answer them. And I may do like a few different questions. So basically you want to answer this quite quickly, come back with good answers and you want to be practice with all of these things. I will go into more depth though. And I've had a few, um, I've got a few examples of interview questions that I might talk about. So like the top interview questions in the UK and stuff. Um, number three is read the job description. Obviously you will have already read the job description, but reread it, read it again. You may want to like print it out and start underlying all the, all the specific skills that they're looking for, because then you memorize it. When you read something, you take it in. When you highlight it, you take it in more. When you read it out loud, you take it in even more. Just memorize these skills they're looking for, because then when they say, what skills do you have? What can you bring to this company? You're like, well, I have communication skills from my past experience here. And you just know. And then bring in all of the things you've done previously, current work that aligns with these requirements, and then they'll know you're serious about it. Right, number four is using the STAR method. So I might do another video on this. I don't know if there's enough information to do a whole video on it, but the STAR method in interviewing is situation task action result so give the context so when they basically this is what you use when they ask you about a specific skill that you've used and they want like a story about it so if they say when have you shown communication in a job role then you give context situation give context to the answer task elaborate on the um when you use this in your role the a is action um explain how you handled the situation or it became the challenge, and four is R, which is result, what you achieved in the pro process. So by using that, you're obviously gonna um, sound really like professional, and yeah, I'm, I mean, I probably won't do another video on that. I think I've covered that enough, to be honest, but obviously you can like research a bit about the STAR method as well. Number five is practicing answering questions with someone else. I spoke about this briefly when I was talking about the confidence um, in interview process and basically practicing your answers out loud is obviously really effective but maybe not just to yourself like try to do this to other people as well if you're doing this in front of other people and two other people say someone's asking you the question get into an interview mode don't just sit in your living room actually sit at a table like you will in an interview and then it'll feel professional hopefully you'll find yourself gaining confidence and using the same words that they want to hear so really important to practice. Number six is preparing a list of references. So they will ask you, I mean, this may be on your CV already, but they will definitely ask you for references um, before or after your interview, whenever. So having this prepared ahead of time will quickly complete this and you'll be able to move forward faster where some other people may not have completed a reference list and then they'll have to do that as well. They may not even use this references, but it's just nice to know that you can, you're confident in yourself enough to use references. So I, might use like the pub I worked at, my uni lecture, like literally whatever. And number seven is be prepared with examples of your work. So during the interview, it depends on the job role you're going for, but say you're going for like a photographer, you need examples of your work. They're going to be saying like, what can you do? What can you do um, with this? Like, how have you done this? Um, do you only do this work or have you done similar stuff, like different stuff before? You want to show them what you can do. After talking about the job description, you want to go into all of your stuff and think, what the, what have I done that relates to this? And bring examples, whether it's like volunteering or anything, bring proof, like a portfolio is just, I mean, if you're creative, portfolio is a pretty good thing to have. I may do another video on creating portfolios and why it's so important, but some jobs that will require a portfolio, photographers, graphic designers, writers, editors, creative um, directors, models, videographers, like, all things where people need examples of your work, give them examples. Otherwise, that's another reason for them not to hire you. You don't want to be giving them reasons not to hire you. Number eight is prepare smart questions for your interviewers. So interviewing is a two-way street. They ask you questions, you can ask them questions. So obviously, at the end of an interview, they generally ask you, do you have any questions for me? 
Now, you are gonna need to come back with a question. I have so many examples of these things, but obviously you need to ask them questions because if you say, no, I don't have any questions. What? You don't have any questions about the whole job role? How? You haven't worked here. How do you not have any questions? They'd be like, okay, this is strange. Um, so you could say, can you explain the day-to-day -day responsibilities of this job? Um, how would you describe the characteristics of someone who would succeed in this role? If I were in this position, how would my performance be measured? How often would it be measured? All this kind of stuff, it makes you seem serious. Now, that's obviously the stuff to do before the interview. Now, on the interview day, after you've spent all your time prepping, you can be successful on interview day by practicing these things that I'm gonna talk about you about, that I'm gonna to talk to you about. Um, so, Number nine is plan your interview attire the night before. You need to know what you're wearing. I'm sorry, but I'd be planning this a week before. I'm just saying a night before because I know people sometimes have other things to focus on. But if you speak to the interviewer before, then you can kind of get an idea of the dress code in the workplace and choose your outfit accordingly. So if they're a really casual place, you could literally go in like, I mean, I don't know, an example of a really casual place, maybe like a chef, I don't know. Although they have uniform, it's different, I guess. But if you don't have someone to ask, I would definitely recommend um, researching the company to see what's appropriate. I may even do a video on dressing for interviews, I don't know, with maybe some examples of clothes that I would wear. But yeah, that's something that's really important because if it's somewhere really, really fancy and you show up in like jeans, they're going to get a really bad impression of you if someone else is in like a nice um, suit dress or something. So, number 10 is bring copies of your CV, a notebook and a pen. You need copies of your CV in case you're going to multiple different places for interviews. I would have the specific accomplishments of everything I've accom accomplished on there so it's easy to refer to and they can then discuss it. Bring a pen and notebook for taking notes. You never know, like you may need to, but just don't make, take notes on a phone or anything. That's gonna look so unprofessional. That's what you're trying to avoid here. Write information down so you can refer to these later. And if you ha come up with a question mid-interview, jot it down, you know, that kind of thing. And I may make a video on different items that you can bring to a job interview. Now, number 11, plan to be there early. 10, 15 minutes early, I'd say. If you're waiting in the waiting room, who cares? Map out your location the day before so you can see how long it's gonna take you to get there, how long it's gonna take to walk, whatever. Just, I would even practice run at the exact time you're going to the interview so you can, um, like have a backup plan if there's delays or closures or anything and then find another way around it if your car can't get through are you going to take the bus what are you going to do you need to plan for all of this so honestly i would always arrive early and then you can use the extra minutes to observe what's going on what are other people wearing how are they doing all of that so i actually just went and had some dinner so very sorry if the angles changed or anything but the next thing the 12th thing when making a good impression on interview day is to make a great first impression. <laughs> Simple as that, but what I mean by this, don't forget the little things. Don't forget to do your hair nicely. Don't forget to make sure your nails are tidy. You're gonna have your nails out. Don't, like, don't, did I say don't make sure to do your nails nicely? I mean, obviously make your nails nice, shine your shoes, polish your shoes, check your clothes for any snags or holes pet hair like I'm covered in pet hair that's not good you know you don't want that for an interview and always remember to smile and I may even do a video on like how to fix a bad first impression that might be fun number 13 is treat everyone you encounter with respect obviously so including anyone anywhere on the road parking lot wherever you are like they could be if they're part of the building whatever they could know the hiring manager they could then tell them that you were rude, you know, oh no, just honestly, they might ask for their feedback, like to the cash, a cash desk, what? to the receptionist, they might say like, oh, how was this person, was this person polite? Because you don't want to just come across really badly, like you just don't. And number 14 is win them over, over with authenticity and positivity. Make sure to be um, genuine during the interview, like you don't want to lie, um, make sure that Everything you say is the truth, so they can easily relate back to you. If you, they mention something in a couple of years and you've lied about it, oh, that's going to be bad. If you show positivity with a smile, um, upbeat attitude, it's just going to make everyone seem a bit happier in the interview. 
and keep the conversation light and just happy rather than like seeming a bit like heavy, you know? You just want to be really positive. Number 15 is respond truthfully to the questions asked. If they ask you something, don't respond how you think they're gonna wanna hear you respond. Respond truthfully, because they're gonna soon find out. Like, they're gonna know. If you if they say, do you have experience dancing? And you say, yeah. And then you get sent to do a dance class or something and you're awful, it's gonna come out. Um, an example of this, if you guys have seen Friends, then Joey actually said that he could dance, like in his CV, on his resume, as they say. He said that he could dance. He said he'd been doing dance for like seven years or something. And then he was asked to teach a dance class. And oh my goodness, it went so badly that he ended up not getting the job at all. So definitely be truthful. 16 is tie answers to your skills and accomplishments. So if you if they say like, um, oh, I, I'm trying to think of an example. I don't know, whatever they say, use every opportunity to address the requirements listed in the job description. This is why I said print them out. So then you know exactly what you're referring back to. They are like printed in your head. Um, 17 is keep your answers con concise you, and focused. You don't wanna go off on a tangent, although it is nice to have a nice like conversation. Remember that your time is limited. It might be like a 10 minute long interview. It could be half an hour. Just be mindful not to ramble on so much. And this is why practicing answers beforehand can keep you focused. Honestly, the amount of times that I've like practiced for my speaking um, assessment in Italian, uh, when I used to do Italian at, at, at GCSE, by the way. So this was in year 11 and I'm now in year 14. So three years ago, I still remember the answer to one of the questions. It was, um, what is there to do in your city? And I went, nella mia città c'è molto da fare, si puoi visitare il centro storico or and like I could literally tell you everything that I said in that and it's so weird because that is in Italian and I remember that somehow yeah I can't string a sentence long anymore it's so weird how memory how things just stick to your mind when you rehearse them enough 18 is don't speak negatively about previous employers because otherwise they're gonna be thinking that could be me soon like obviously they're gonna trust the other employers more than you that like if you say oh yeah like my employer they were just so rude to me like no because why were they rude to you? I wouldn't, I wouldn't mention it. Now I'm gonna move on to after the interview. So when your job interview is over, give yourself the best chances of moving forward by number 19, asking about the next steps. After your interview, it's always appropriate to ask the interviewer what you should expect next. So they will normally say like, oh, you should receive a follow-up email with results from your interview, if you were successful or not, or a phone call or whatever, along with additional requirements. They might ask you to do like an assessment or like some training or something. They might ask for reference lists and stuff. So yeah, if you ask about the next steps, then they're gonna think that you're actually interested. And number 20, the final step is send a thank you letter after the interview. Some people might think this is a bit much, but if your interview is in person, ask for the business card of each person you speak to so you can like follow up with them after with a thank you email. I wouldn't necessarily send a letter, like just an email is fine. Um, just like a thank you for your time. And if you were interviewed in the morning, send your follow up emails the same day because then they're gonna, you're gonna be on their mind. On their mind. Um, so yeah, just make sure every email is like distinct from the other one because if you're interviewed by a few different people, you don't want to be sending the same email to everyone. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's just like the basics of interviews, how to make a good first impression, 20 tips. I really hope this did help. If it did, you know what to do, give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe. That is the end of this episode. Woo! Is this episode seven or eight? I can't remember now. That's actually really bad. I keep forgetting. But yeah, thank you so much for listening. If you've listened, then make sure to give it a follow and a five star rating. And if you've been watching, make sure to give it a subscribe and a thumbs up and leave any suggestions of future videos you would like to see. Thank you so much for watching.